I'm, I'm, I'm here with, uh, with Chrissy. Chrissy, tell us about you. Hello, I'm Chrissy. I'm from the, the UK. Um, I'm turning 50 this year, which is quite a big milestone for me because I was actually born um, with cerebral palsy and um, wasn't expected to reach my first birthday. So quite quite a big achievement this year. Oh, great. And you just recently had a major um, event. You just published a book. Tell us yeah. about that book. What is that? What is the name of the book and what is the subject of the book? Well, for my work, I'm a mental health therapist. And what I decided to do was to put some of the work that I do into a book. So my book is called A Look Inside the Therapy Room. And what it does, what I hope it does, is for those people that have not been a little bit nervous about it, I hope it kind of gives you a bit of a, a fly on the wall look at what happens in the room. So I answer some of the questions that people ask me a lot, like what kind of room, what kind of talk about. What's the advantage of one kind of therapy over another? Um, it also gives you a little insight into my life about living with cerebral palsy, discrimination, and bullying that I've had to overcome to get where I am today. And then at the back of the book, it shares five different chapters with our bereavement, loss, and suicide rejection young adults in therapy, disability in therapy, and men in therapy. And in each of them chapters, I share one, if not two, stories of my previous clients, what they came with, and the outcome they got from their therapy. Oh, great. So uh, this is your first book? Yes, definitely. Congratu yeah. Congratulations on that. Hopefully there'll be many more after this. Um, and what um, what got you to do it? What what motivated you to do it? Last year I moved from um, living in the, the city out to a village, um, and the difference is quite vast. And I just put out LinkedIn a comment to say, "What's the best way to rebuild my business in a brand new area?" And somebody came back and said, if you know about writing the book, because you can use a book as that emotional tool, and equally your book is going to reach a lot more people than you can as one person. So that's why the idea started. And it kind of ran from there. Okay, good. So your book is... Um written from a standpoint about people who, um, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, it, it's not about people who have cognitive issues, it's the people who have uh, struggles with mental issues, is that correct? Yeah, anyone that, that struggles with mental health and issues, it hasn't got to be labeled mental health. It can be simple if they have anxiety or depression, or not even that, it can just be that what I describe in my book is when we try and create or solve a problem on our own, the same thought goes round and round and round in our head and then turns out and we don't find a solution. So the idea of therapy is you go and talk about it to somebody's friend, like I, I'm trying to, to talk to you in a certain way that, that helps you take things differently, how do you come up with solutions? It's all about you finding your own solutions, not me telling you what to do. So you're talking, um, um, as you mentioned, um, depression is one of the things to deal with. Um, do you get into serious um, uh, mental health issues um, like schizophrenia and things like that? I've not worked with schizophrenia. I have worked with somebody that had a multiple personality disorder, which is really 
interesting to work with because until that person came through the door, he didn't know which one of their personalities was going to be there that, that week. That, and the personality could change throughout the session as well. Um, but that was kind of a, a one-off. The majority of my work is people that are just struggling in general. Like I work with a lot of, I call them young adults, and it's kind of like the, the people that have been to school and now they're going to university or higher education. I think ah, okay. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, probably the common thing, depression. How do you deal? How do you deal with somebody who has depression? It, you work from it on two different angles. You work in the here and now, because a lot of people just want to to deal with the issue you've got so they can get on with their life. You work in the here and now, looking at whatever you come with. It could be depression. It could be anxiety. It could be you lost your job. It isn't that that I work with. I work with the thoughts and the feelings that this situation leaves you with. I work with the, the anger, the upset, the rage, the, the feeling of hopelessness and the thoughts that are connected with that. We kind of look at that, but that's like working here and now, how can you cope in your everyday life? But then alongside that, I will go back and look at your past, See what your thought pattern, your belief pattern is to let you be where you are today. Okay. So in your book, um, you um, talk about real life situations. You talk in, in general about things. Do you talk, is your book, um, so who should be reading that book? Is it, if, if, if I'm struggling with anxiety, um, is this book going to help me? The purpose of the book is to give you a view of what it would be like to be in therapy. That's one side of it. But hopefully the, the, the chats at the end are more like look at problems more in detail. They include actual previous client stories. So the hope is that you will not just see that Chris has done this, you will hear a previous client story and you relate to that and think, okay, but she can help that person out, because she help me. And I look at it again in two ways. There's information now, you could contact me directly if you want to book me. But then because I, I understand that everyone wants therapy, not I, I can't see everyone in the whole world. I've also put in there details of some um, courses that you can just by a mind do yourself at home. So it's a little bit like, there's a little bit of self-help in there, but again, it's kind of recognizing when you are and seeing how much help you need. Oh, great. So tell me, um, what, are the, what are the titles of some of the chapters? Okay, so the, the first bit is my story. So it tells you about how I was actually born dead and that's how, I've now got cerebral palsy and goes on to say about the, the hurdles and challenges I've had to get over in my life. And I've written that because I'm not, I haven't written it in a way of poor me. I want people to, I want it to be the opposite and people go, oh my God, she comes through all that and look what she's doing now, I can do that. That's what I want people to get. And then the second part, answer the question that what happens in therapy? What can I talk about? How long can I come for? What do I what do I do in between my sessions? That's quite important that people just don't go for their session, do nothing in between, turn up the following week because you're seeing the progress that way. So that covers the first eight chapters and then the last five or there's one about um bereavement loss and suicide and that looks at people that have come because they've lost somebody through a bereavement and how we deal with that 
how there's a couple of client stories in there that are very different. One lost a dad, one lost a mum, because that their story and their outcome of therapy. There's also a little bit in there about suicide um, and how I work with people that tell me they're suicidal. And there's quite a strong poem on suicide in there that I actually wrote and reviewed it when I had a mental health issue and my brain went down that road. So I should share a little bit of how I got over that as well. Um, the, the next chapter is young adults and therapy, and that looks at like, the people that are in higher education or just left home. Um, probably around the 1926 age group, where they're just trying to find their way in the world, and it's a very different world from when we were that age. A lot of them are affected mm -hmm. by the, the pressures of social media, the pressures of looking at a way because of what they're seeing online. And it's just, it, if they're not equipped for that from the beginning, and that's when you thrown into university for all these people, a lot of them nowadays are actually struggling just to get through the courses. And that's an area that I've worked, I've worked with for a number of years, is helping young adults complete their university degrees. Um, and and I want to like their first jobs in first first homes away from their parents and stuff like that. But it's really rewarding when you take somebody from wanting to drop out of university to get their degree and get their first job. The next chapter is about disability and therapy, and obviously having my disability. That's an area that I'm really, really passionate about because mm -hmm. there's so many different angles to disability. You, you've got the people that simply just come out of the house for, for whatever reason. They're not physically able, they haven't got the support to get out to arrange that. Those people amount to like people living with disabilities that are like myself that are working driving, running their own businesses, but still the disability is causing mental health problems because of the physical side of it. And then the last chapter is called Men and Therapy. And again, I included that as a separate chapter for itself because I feel it's quite important that we recognise men's mental health is very different from women's mental health. Right. They need a, a, a different level of support. Within that chapter, that's quite a strong chapter, to be honest, we can. But the the um, point in that chapter was actually raped as a child and then went on to get into the, an abusive relationship and a coercive relationship as an adult. And it tells his story of how he came out the other side and it, He's now living a happy life. But again, I just thought it was important to acknowledge the fact that both men and women can be affected by rape. Right. Okay, great. Um, and let's talk just a little bit about the disability part of it, because myself being president of the Rotary Club of World Disability Advocacy, obviously that's one of my 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 focuses. And so yes, um, somebody who has a disability, um, it can cause um, um, some mental issues because of um, the limitations the person has, but it also has an impact because of the way society looks at somebody with a disability. Do you, do you discuss that at all? Yeah, definitely. One, one of the stories in there is actually about a, a lady who both for a physical disability and ADHD and her her workplace won't recognise her disabilities. They won't give her what we in the UK call reasonable adapting at work. So not only is it affecting her physically because she's been overworked and that affects her disability, 
it's a certain immensely knowing that she's not been listened to, not been heard. Not, she works in a building where her office is on the fourth floor and the lift hasn't worked for five years. So she's having to work on the ground floor on her own and start looking at, uh, again, with the disability um, client, I look at it in two ways. I look at what they're dealing with and behaving now, what we can change. But then, as we know, in the disability world, there's a lot we can't change. We can't change our disabilities sometimes. It's about, OK, what do I need to accept that this is me? And how, how do I accept that? And who do I want to be after I've accepted me? OK, good. Excellent. Uh, and the other, <clears throat> the other thing, um, I, I don't have any statistics in front of me, but it's pretty well known that uh, many people will not go to therapy and they do not go to therapy because of the stigma that's attached to therapy that what are my friends going to say? What are they going to think about me? And he, uh, did you tackle that at all as far as the the <clears throat> the dealing with the, um, even you're getting yourself to go to therapy uh, that, and yeah, go ahead. That's kind of the idea at the beginning of the book. Okay. There, is, there is a lot of abuse out there that you go to therapy and the therapy just, therapist just tells you what to do and they just read your mind or they just want to be fully informed and that with me. It's nothing like that. I'm what you call a person-centred therapist. I'm, I make it all about you. So yes, I hear what you're saying that some people won't even like contact therapists because of the, the stigma. But I, I, all I can say about that is I would certainly recommend that you do because you will find that most people that give therapy or like very, they want to do it, like, I, I want to do it to help me be happier because for me personally, it was having therapy in the past, it's got me where I am now. Someone was like, okay, this helped me, I'd like to do that for other people. We are, we are, at the end of the day, just human beings. So all you're really doing is asking and then we even being for help. If you can get past that hurdle and just have a conversation, it's about finding the right therapist for you as well. Not everyone needs to get everyone. And I I have my hands up for opening and say, not everyone will want to work with me. There's not everyone that I will be able to help because my, my focus might not be what you need. But it's just starting that conversation of what is therapy, what, even before you contact your therapist, what, what I put in the book is there's a list of questions of, about what you would take to therapy and more, why you want to go. So just remember, it, it is about you. The therapy, therapist is there to facilitate your change. So as long as you can have a good working relationship with them. Really being quite honest with you, the, the work is on you. So, you know, it's down to down yeah, change. Very good. All right. Um, so um, uh, how does somebody get your book? Okay, my book is available on Amazon and you can get it either via a Kindle um, version or a paperback at the minute. I've not gone down the road of looking into audiobook at the moment. It literally, it's only been on Amazon about three weeks, so I'm kind of seeing what the demand is. If you if a better enough people send me want an audiobook, I would look in. But it's just but it was just a case of put it up and see see how it's so, Funded to it, moment. Well, I mean, if you if you download it on Kindle, it will give you the audio version of it. Yeah, so I thought I thought that, 
yeah. you could do that, yeah. Yeah, so you really don't need an audio version of it Good. right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, right. As you can see, I like talking, but the thought of reading my whole book onto, onto audio to, for me doesn't sit very comfortably because of my own speech. Yeah, uh, but uh, I mean, for me, I have ADD. So yeah. I have a hard time reading, but yeah. audio is much better for me. So um, so that's why I do use the audio part of the Kindle. So it, it yeah. is available, no problem. Yeah. Um, all right, well, thank you very much. Um, congratulations you. on your first book. Um, I'm looking forward to, uh, to reading it myself um, because it's fascinating, the subject. And uh, we look forward to reading this book, and we also look forward to hopefully this is your start of a whole <laughs> series, series of books. Hopefully, no, no, no permission, <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Okay.